Hey guys, we have a full moon in Gemini coming up in the next couple of hours. And I'm just going to run through the definition of that. We're going to start with this chart. What we're looking at is astro seek. Now, if you look to, let's get my pointer so you can see this, because this will help you to navigate some of your own astrology. So you can see here that it's horoscopes.astro hyphen seek.com. So you go there and then you can be pulling up your, you know, when you pull up the screen, you can then check your own birth chart and online calculator. And there are other great things like the current planets and such like. And for chart readings, for transits, you're better off um, booking a reading to understand what they're doing. Unless you understand that, then you won't need to anybody but it's can be fascinating because people have different types of knowledge for instance i have so much knowledge however there are times when there are people that are more knowledgeable than me on this subject and i'll turn to them i know a few good astrologers out there that were at the beginning of my own astrology journey that are far ahead of me in the game of understanding so for each of us it's going to be different we're going to be at different levels and we take that into account um how deep we go into astrology it's symbols and we can see that this chart that i'm showing you now is the full moon and the full moon in the uk is happening at 407 a.m if you are in New York, as an example, then it's going to be your five hours behind. So that's 11.07 p.m. And that would be on the 7th because this is the 8th at 4.07 a.m. in the UK, December 8th and December 7th. And if you're in California, then you're eight hours behind. So that would be at 8.07 p.m. on the December 7th, which is today. So Currently, this moon is falling in the sign. Actually, this is my natal chart. So let's go back to, I'm showing you my natal chart. What I want to show you first is the current chart. Okay, so this is the current chart. I just showed you my natal, but I'm going to go back to that. So what you have is that the moon is conjunct Mars, and Mars is retrograde. And then we have opposite the sun so the sun when it's a new moon the moon and the sun are together conjunct but when it's a full moon it's an opposition it's opposite so it's a time when we the, the light is shone on two things so for me this is happening in my seventh house so you want to look at the house and this is why you need your birth time because the moon will fall into a particular house. So for me, it's falling in my seventh house, which is to do with all types of partnerships. And also it's to do with um, open enemies, as an example. So you're dealing with people and things are more out in the open. The full moon, it's a phase when we've got the opposition and it's basically, it's a time of planting a cycle for the flower to emerge. So that's from Travel Time Passages that says this, which is you can get an app. Time Passages is a great app for your phone. There are different apps out there. There's one free one by Time Passages that you can get to begin to learn your own astrology. So this is also a time of maximum light in the cycle of seasons of the, the, the moon. You know, it's, it's every month we have a new moon and a full moon. And it's a phase where we basically, it's the effect of our work on others and it's operating out of a mode of visible clarity rather instead of blind faith. So we understand. So, you know, something's come to light and head for me today. And it means that I'm seeing something to do with my partnerships with others. And that can be all types. It can be work. It can be intimate relationships and all types of things that I'm dealing with. I'm seeing things, something's come to light and it gives you visible clarity. So and it also gives you objectivity, which I've had. And because we've also always got decisions to make. Um, I recently watched a movie called Stu's, S-T-U-Z. And it's about a therapist that, that basically is interviewed by his 
client and it's a brilliant movie because this guy uses tools and we, astrology is also a tool so when we have tools that we can use to help us with our own observation of ourself or life it's you know it's very useful but I also suggest you go to Netflix and check out a movie called Stu's S-T-U-Z it gives you a lot of insight into yourself and also you know like each decision we make there's no wrong or right a decision we do what we do and it's like stringing pearls and he explains he had a brilliant um understanding of visualization like how we can make changes via visualization I'm also at this time doing a diploma at um with the clinical hypnosis I'm doing a diploma in clinical hypnosis in London which is started in October and it finishes in end of or the beginning my exam will be August the 5th 2023 and again the mind is very powerful so whilst we have our current problems and we have our childhood and our wounding and all of that stuff and we make decisions the more we know and explore and expand and look at the mind the healthier we can get and we get wise and that's the whole point the the moon this full moon is where we can be open to the influence of those around us also and aware that the influence that can be we can have on others as well. In in this sense, where basically it's where our work has meaning for you or for me, you know, it's where our work has meaning in combination with other people. So this four moons are more to do with, because it's the opposition, it's to do with others as well. It's not just us. And then we're going to look at the transits of this, but you can see what's going on here. I will look at solar fire as well, and I'll show you my chart from two different angles briefly so that you can learn your own astrology. So you see here, we've got Jupiter um, in the sign of Pisces, and it's just about to leave. And when it does leave, it's been in its last retrograde, just finished a few weeks ago, and it's moving into the sign of Aries, and it will remain in Aries for some time now. But we take into account that for a year, because Jupiter takes 12 years around the chart. So it's a 12 year cycle. Neptune is, I believe, 184, but I could be wrong on that. It's around 180 years around the chart. So it's very slow moving. This is heading towards, this is on my IC at the moment. I'll show you that too. Um, then we've got Chiron, which is the wound, our wound, and it's at 12 degrees of Aries at the moment. And then we've got the North Node conjunct Uranus, which has been helping us to shift and make changes and break free of limitations. It's quite interesting that all through the the year, you know, we've had this going on. The Node and the South Node, they take 18 years to move around the chart and they go around the chart this way. And all of the other planets, the Sun, Venus, um, Mercury, they all go around the chart this way. So we know that the node is in Taurus and it's going to be there for, it's a year and a half a sign. So it's just, we're halfway through that now at 13 degrees and then it will go to 12 and so on. We've got the moon. This is interesting that this is retrograde conjunct and it's forming back, falling bang on my natal moon, that, that is. We've got Lilith here at 26 this is true Lilith of cancer we've got the sun is in Sagittarius at one degree no sorry 1601 at the same as 1601 the same as the moon 16 degrees sorry about that then we have Venus which will be leaving the sign of Sagittarius in the coming days and moving into Capricorn and we've also got Mercury up there that's one degree of Capricorn and Pluto will be leaving in 2023, I think it's March, it sort of dips into Aquarius, it's quite exciting. And then the last time it was there would have been 245 years ago. So it's exciting times. So we're going back to 1700s. In 1776, Pluto was where it is roughly now around the formation of the USA. So the USA is having currently its Pluto return. 
And as humans, we don't have that because we don't live 240 odd years. Ha -ha. So there you go. Then we have um, Saturn is in Aquarius. And Saturn, we were having a lot of restriction all through that COVID time. That hasn't quite gone away, if you get me, because people want to, there's some stuff going on around that, but that's, I won't go into it now of what's going on with um, certain things around that. So this Saturn is square still to Uranus, but that's moving off now. And that we've had our last square of Saturn Uranus. So this was where we wanted to break free of limitations. That North Node was definitely helping us. The North Node in the sign of Taurus is where we basically are taking care of our needs. It's second house stuff. So we're taking care of our inner needs and where this learning to stand on our own two feet, basically. That's what that's about. And, and also that would be then, you know, if we look at the governmental thing, it's like where we are learning to stand on our own two feet and we're making those necessary changes. The moon in Gemini is, if we look at Gemini, and I've got a Gemini moon, I'm going to show you here. You see, this is my transit chart, and this is still horoscopes.astro forward slash seat.com. So you can see my transits here, and you can see here you've got the ability to move them by hours, weeks, months ahead, even years. Look. I could go 50 years ahead, 27 years ahead, which is fascinating. The year ahead. We don't want, you know, we, we don't want to go too deep into what's ahead of us personally because we're living our lives. The astrology is happening in our lives day to day anyway, in reflection of what's really going on for us. And this is why the house placements are so important to know. So you can see that that sun is on quite beautifully. That sun is on my part of fortune right now so this is good for me so with that I've got the moon opposition to my part of fortune which is you know we can look at it being good luck if we want sort of in many ways it depends how we read it but we've got to remember that there's aspects to that which I'll show you then the sun is conjunct also there and the moon is an opposition the sun is conjunct so in Sagittarius so the moon for me is square Pluto. So I was born with moon square Pluto. So you can see here, this is the moon. It's at 17 degrees up here. So the moon is actually on my Pluto at the moment. If you go here, look, we've got the moon, 17 degrees. The moon is 16 in transit. So you've got birth, you've got transit, you've got the planet, birth, transit. So my moon at 17 degrees here, up here, and this is squaring to my Pluto. So I was born with it. I understand the nature of that. And it's also square to my Uranian energy as well. So square to Uranus. The moon is also beautifully here, sextile to my Venus. So you can see here that's a sextile, 60 degrees, just under there. It'd be 58 because my, net, my Venus is 18 degrees of of Aries you see there. And then the moon is also conjunct my moon. And then we've got the sun square Pluto, the sun square Uranus, the sun trine Venus, which is beautiful for me. So the sun is trine in my Venus. So there's something going on with me that I'm making some inner changes and I'm focusing on myself, but I'm also having to deal with partnership issues. So partnerships, remember, could be anything in the seventh house. Um, the full moon, going back now to, we're going to look at solar fire. If you see here, I'll make sure I'm sharing the right, the right screen. So new share. Okay, so this is the animated page and we're going to be able to move this. So you can see here that with the spotlight that the sun is 1601 and the moon is, and you can see the retrograde. Mars is going back to eight degrees. So that's worth knowing because... That Gemini is there until the end of March. It, the, the Mars in Gemini is there until the end of March. And if we look, begin to look at some of the aspects of what this means for us, a lot of people can feel the energy of a full moon. Generally, I tend to not sleep the night of a full moon, or I have a lot of, I 
generally dream a lot anyway, personally. I don't know if any of you uh, wild dreamers out there, but my dreams tend to be very active. So part of my life is living with recalling my dreams and working with my dreams to understand things about myself. And I look at them, not every single one, but some of them are really powerful in helping me make decisions. Some of them, there are fears where I try and resolve certain things within myself. There's like signal signs. So when we've got the moon in Gemini, you can see here, the moon is basically in Gemini is a need for mental stimulation. And with that Mars there, on you know, with the moon, there can be a lot of egocentrical stuff flying around as well. It's where we are very curious with the moon in Gemini. And it's also where we seek answers to many questions. So it's very interesting because that moon in Gemini is in my seventh house. So I seek answers to many questions through others. I need people to bounce things off. If your moon is somewhere else, you don't need to do that, as an example. Or if your moon is in Aquarius, you're going to be different the way you deal with your inner world with regard to your moon stuff. Chatterbox, yes, I love to talk. Um, and it's also where... You know, the, if we look at the third house um, here, but remember, it's going to be that's collective because I've taken the chart from zero degrees of Aries, which is the beginning. But the Gemini keywords, it's our short term memory. It's fluctuating view, viewpoints. It's where we rationalize. It's to do with um, where we can be cynical, literal. It can be superficial. It can be scattered. It can be about learning and writing and speaking. It's also to do with um, our marketing and it's to do with local travels. It's to do with information. It's the trickster. So there can be some joy and fun with that. It's not like an evil type thing being a trickster. You know, you can be playful. It's intellectual doubt. It's about opinions. It's duality. It can be instability because you sort of is it this way or that way. It's ever-changing, it's a teacher and it's a scribe, short journeys, trader and merchant, communication. And then with the sun in Sagittarius, we take the definition of the sun here. We're looking at adaptability. This is Sagittarius keywords, so don't relate this wholly to the sun. It's, you know, you could have, for instance, when we look at Venus then in the needs, in the sign of Sagittarius, you know, we take the house, we're taking the planet, we're taking various different things. And then we have to take into account the um, aspects. And I know it looks crazy in there, but that's because I'm using a lot, many different types of aspects there. So we've got with Sagittarius keywords, we're looking at beliefs, it's dogma, philosophy, wisdom, meaning, expansion. It's about trust, faith, truth. It's the nomad, it's to do with multicultural, the long journeys, honesty, it's our intuition, it's also restlessness, it's half-truth, it can be the silver-tongued devil, the charmer, guru, teacher, natural law, shaman, and alienation, and there's other things going on there. So the more you understand the archetypes and you get to learn, you don't forget, you know, and then you basically begin to put it all together, so it's, it's good stuff. The full moon in the ninth house. So I'm going to say that the ninth house is, you know, it's not just the ninth house, but the, your moon may be falling in the ninth house, but this full moon. But the idea would be that in the if we take the ninth house and we know that also we've got that we've got the sun there at the moment. I'm moving there actually. I've got the wrong one. We're looking at. We're supposed to be looking at Gemini moon i've pulled out the wrong wrong information there but the gemini is definitely um you know with that mars is interesting that that is retrograde so the moon conjunct mars because the moon symbolizes our instinctive awareness and mars is our energy and it's our drive it's our passion it's like also it's where we are impulsive so if you consider that we've got this mars here with the impulsiveness of the moon as well and it's where we want to spread information with mars in gemini and it's where we are assertive but we've also it can resort to evasive behavior 
that's been going on as well. It can be evasive behaviour and we can see that playing out in in the collective as well. If we look at that Mars and we go days ahead, and if you just follow me here, this is the 9th of December, and you'll see this Mars will go back to, I think it's eight. If you look here, we're watching where this Mars goes. I think it was eight degrees. And it stations on the 12th. And it's then on the 14th, it goes direct. And then it will be there until the end of March. In fact, we can just have a look. Weeks, one, two, three. There you go. So the end of March, 29 degrees, 50 there. So literally 25th of March, it's going to be moving out and then it will be moving into the sign of cancer. So that Mars has been there for a hell of a long time. So Mars, when we look at Mars in Gemini, you know, it's our, when we've got the planet of action, energy and motivation, and generally it would spend in each sign, Mars would spend seven to eight weeks in each sign, unless it's retrograde, which it is. So, and with the Mars in Gemini, it's where we we have more energy to engage in mentally stimulating activities. And we feel like connecting our thoughts with others. So that's what we want to do, but we've gone inward because it's gone retrograde. So it's where we can find greater courage to speak our mind and which we've needed in society. When you think of what went on with all of the lockdowns and people being blocked or thrown off um, social media, people at, at the moment were inwardly maybe looking for courage to speak our mind and intellectual energy is high in high gear, but we're going to have to wait until that goes direct. So if we go back again, and we come back to today, that's the third. So we're going back by days now. One, two, three, that's today. And if we consider that seventh, eighth, okay. So if we consider that this is going back words, and I think we check that date again, days, when it's coming out of that retrograde. Because I forgot, so there you go, 14th. So the four, it's actually the 14th of January, it's going direct. So that will then enhance up until the end of March, our ability and courage to speak the truth and while being high gear, communication styles are more assertive, which will be great. You know, it'll be a great shift that we need. We've got um, the sun is opposition Mars at this time with the full moon. We're going backwards again. I love solar fire. I don't know if any of you guys have that this out there seventh eighth okay so here we are back to the this moon full moon so what we've got is um where the sun opposing mars so i have this natally actually my no i have conjunct i have mars conjunct natally the sun opposing mars at this time is it gives us the ability to work hard and also to take unnecessary risks. But remember, it's retrograde. So it's where we can be impulsive and be excitable and selfish. But again, it's inward, inward. The sun is sextile to Saturn. So if you see the sun, it's in a sextile, it's moving on in and it's applying. So this gives us the ability to work hard and take on responsibility. And people who have this natally, it's where they very responsible and also that where they can be hard on themselves as well because the sun is where we shine. So this can make people hard on themselves. The sun square Neptune is our um, applying is it can make us overly empathetic and too willing to sacrifice ourselves. So we don't want to be, you know, used by other people. So we need to check in for ourselves what's going on there. 
And we should, you know, with that, with the sun square Neptune, really it's to stay away from any mind altering stuff. And because it's that time of year where people do that, I stopped drinking alcohol 10 years ago and I wouldn't go back because I love my clarity. And it's really important to me with the work that I'm doing, which is helping people who've had trauma to overcome that because a lot more trauma can be created by overuse of anything, you know, that's mind changing. And the moon conjunct Mars, although we've already been there, it does give us courage and it gives us love for adventure. And we are able to find unusual solutions. And it can be in a family environment that we know exactly what we want and it's difficult to convince others that that's always also right. Um, and it's like, well, we don't want to conform. We don't want to conform with that. You know, we want, we're in conforming with this aspect. And if you, you know, that Mars at the moment is also on my natal moon. So I don't want, you know, I've done a few things today where I've decided I'm not conforming to certain things and I'm standing up for myself. And I've done it with grace as well, which has been really important to me because we have to stand up for ourselves. And sometimes we can be of the nature, depending on our astrology chart, where we don't push back. And I tend to be very graceful in my, when people are rude to me or what people are, you know, I give people a lot of leeway. So i am had to learn in life um, where that's been projected onto me as a kid to conform unnecessarily and very harshly and very damaging situations I've had to learn to push back and I'm learning to do that now and whilst I give people the benefit of the doubt this is a time when I say no that you know what's a no is a no so that that Mars is really helpful where we do need to stand up for ourselves and maybe change some things for ourselves the moon is trying to Saturn as well so if you look at the moon it's trining Saturn and that's applying as well. And this gives us emotional stability. It's harmonious, which is quite lovely. The moon is sextile to Uranus. I'm running through these with you because they're quite beautiful. So the moon is in a in a sex, semi-sextile. So that's 30 degrees. So you understand what that is. The semi-sextile is like 30. You can see there that's 15 and that's 16, so that's a 30 degrees, just about 31 degrees, but that's what that's doing there. Mercury is conjuncted Venus, but it's now separating, and this gives us um, mental balance and good manners, and it's where we can express ourselves well. So if you have this, this is quite lovely. So, and it's a beautiful way of communicating, and it's where we're rational but we don't particularly feel like um expressing our feelings too openly and we got to think that that mercury now in the sign of capricorn which it's just gone into it's where we are wise and we're careful thinkers so if you have mercury in capricorn you, you it's where you're wise and you're a careful thinker and you place importance on credibility and authority. And it's also where you seek knowledge which carries some authority. So you, you, the knowledge that we seek will carry some authority. We're not just seeking knowledge just for the sake of knowledge. It's like, you know, it's like looking at, for instance, I'm studying clinical hypnosis and I'm having to look at papers that are to do with Harvard University. So that would be simply where I'm looking at credible um knowledge that it's credible that where things have been done it's where we approach new ideas with caution as well so if there's any new ideas that come in we're going to be approaching it with caution and then that will clearly as the month goes on the weeks go on the mercury will conjunct pluto and then you know we've got quite a lot of activity coming up here because venus and the sun are also going to be conjuncting pluto so those are the next hits conjunct to Pluto will be Mercury, Venus, and then the sun. Mercury is 88 days around the chart. Venus, I think, is 224. And the sun, we know it's a year. So we know that Capricorn, if we look ahead um, by days, and I move this through, we can see that Mercury will conjunct 
at 27 degrees. Venus will reach it first. That's really interesting. Venus will be here on the, oh, that's right, because Mercury goes, oh, right, okay, Mercury retrograde. So let's go back here. Right, so this is good we caught this because I didn't look that far ahead. So that Mer Mercury is going to retrograde. Now, this is fascinating. So Mercury will get 24 degrees. 28th of December, it will be on Pluto, 24. 20, then it stations at 24. Fascinating stuff. And it will be opposing Lilith as well. So it'll clearly be doing other things. So it's going to go retrograde in Capricorn, which is interesting because Capricorn is also related to Saturn as well as we know Capricorn Saturn 10th house public government so I wonder what's going to be going on here we'll look at that another time but that's a good one that we've caught there so that's why Venus overtakes because then Mercury goes retrograde so Really, when that Mercury was coming up to Pluto, then it's about it's uncovering uncovering something. It's communication, so that there's going to be something going on around governmental communication clearly in the public. And then Venus will cross over on the second. It will first of January. It's conjunct. How beautiful it starts. Venus. Well, I don't know if we're going to call it beautiful, but it's definitely. You know, Venus is very beautiful and it's very deep when Pluto conjunct Venus. And then the sun, that's the next one we'll look at. So do look where this full moon is falling for you because it it's the full moon is really quite beautiful. It's a culmination of things. I had a very main event that happened six years ago for me at the form time of the full around the time of the full moon. So I feel like I've done a lot of work on myself, a lot of maturing and come to a point of understanding something deeply that I needed to understand. Um, so that we can see here, 18th, 19th, 27 degrees, 28, it'll cross, that's the 19th of, um, let's say the 18th, it's, some will be conjunct Pluto, which is huge. And it does it once a year anyway. So let's go back to today. And we got the 7th December 2022. I'm looking forward to 2023. I've got some good feelings personally about it. I think that we've been through a hell of a lot. It really feels like we've been in the energy of lockdown and restrictions for like pre-2020. But, you know, really astrologers knew that it was going to kick off and be a long-term change going on and I'm quite grateful looking back for certain decisions I made around my own health and my own authority and what I've been able to achieve inwardly through that period of time and um, a lot of us were looking at wounds so everybody's got something different out of it there's been a lot of grief a lot of loss as well I'm glad I'm still here on planet earth you know it's not been easy for people at all but we've been through a hell of a lot. So the Saturn square Uranus, which is coming out. So Saturn, we can see square to the Uranus. It's five, it's um, separating, which is fantastic. It's been responsible for the fact that we've ha often have no principles and are very chaotic. So that would have been, you know, looking at government Capricorn at the time when it went into 2020, Saturn was in conjunct. When we had the Saturn conjunct Pluto and Jupiter, in 2020 that was huge and that uranus is moving off here and it's where we've um developed a sense of order somewhat um which is not acceptable to other people like some people have created their own order when we look at what's going on with monetary stuff right now and what may be pushed and pushed put ahead and put our way and we're going to have to make some new decisions about that too saturn is sextile to neptune and this aspect can block imagination and it can also bring chaos and confusion. So Saturn sextile to Neptune, if you look, if we look at Neptune here and that Saturn's moving in, in it's applying. So there can be a bit of confusion. If we look at days ahead and we see that 
Saturn, if we take it to 22 degrees, you see there, we've got Jupiter's moved into, Jupiter moves in 21st of December. Jupiter's moving into Aries, 2021st, depending on where you are. And then that Saturn will be in a conjunction with Neptune. Not a conjunction, sorry. It, Saturn will be semi-sextile Neptune. It's applying at the moment, so it blocks imagination. So we might have a bit of difficulty with that. Neptune... I'm just wondering what else is going on. It will be nice when that Mars goes direct. Um, the nodes are, node conjunct Uranus is being positive in that it's helped us to search for new and original ways to deal with our life challenges. And because it's in Taurus as well, like that Uranus in Taurus was there in the last world war. So it's been interesting. And there are wars still going on. You know, there's some hard stuff still going on. I've managed to stay a bit away from that stuff in order to heal my mind and um, from coming, bringing myself out of fear. So I've been focusing on my studies and I've been focusing on health care of myself. This node conjunct Uranus, which is separating, is in the downside of that aspect is that we want to live in a way according to our own rules. So we're trying to work together. It can be a painful gap between a need for independence and freedom and the challenges that we face in our lives. And it's very difficult for us to, it can be very difficult for us at times to concentrate on what's really important. So if we can bring ourselves back in and concentrate on what's really important, like keeping warm, it's winter if you're in in certain parts of the world and in other parts of the world, it's not. So our needs, food, you know, Taurus, inner needs, really important, our inner needs, and also taking care of our people that we love as well. So the North Node in Taurus, it's ruled by Venus, and it's where they were practical. You know, the Taurus energy is, my North Node is in Taurus, it's practical, and it's got a love of pleasure, which, you know, Taurus, North Node. And it's where we have our powerful will. And it's where we can be stubborn as well, but where we can be steady, loyal, and kind as well. And obey, you know, to a certain degree, but not blindly. And it's purposeful, it's productive, it's a stabilizing influence. So that's been very useful to us because it's letting go of all of this uncertainty, Scorpio, you know, crisis, past Scorpio crisis energy, which is also, if we take that the eighth house is also part of the Scorpio, the eighth house. And if we look at the eighth house, the eighth house represents a quest for a set of personal values. And it's where we need to leave behind past life miss you know what the things that miss medine misdemeanors and earn our way in life so it's where we've got to earn our own way in life you know and grow up with that north node in the you know we're taking care of our own needs with the north node in taurus so the south node in scorpio is a quest to overcome distrust of change so with the north node in taurus it's basically if i'm getting i hope i'm not confusing you there scorpio so, but with Taurus, it's where we basically begin to not be distrustful of change. And with the South Node in Scorpio, it's where, you know, the it's where suffering and traumatic endings in past, in, the, in our past, you know, current past or past lives, if we believe in that, which left us with the deep emotional wounds and a feeling of being cheated. So I have that natally. I have the North Node in Taurus. And South Node. And even in this early, early, so it plays out in our early part of life. And I can say, you know, I had a lot of distrust from that. Very traumatic. So, you know, fascinating to look at astrology and the meanings and definitions. One last thing before I go, I'm going to go back to 
do a new share. So if you use here, where is it? Let's see. We're going back to this and we're going to go to Astro Seek. Astro, sorry, astro.com. So if you can see this, you may be for more familiar with this type of chart. So you can see that the North Node here is in my sixth house, work and routines, health and routines. And that Mars and Moon, look where that is for you and leave a message below and let me know. That's all I'm covering for today. And if you want your astrology done with me, then do book a session in the link below and we can dig deeper to something that you want to look at. I will say something that's interesting. I just looked at for me, the Saturn is on my Lilith, which is my true Lilith. So that's asking me to look at what I do with my time, which is quite fascinating. It's asking me to manage my time or to not overdo it with the time that I've got. So I'm being asked to mature in that way and become wise. What true Lilith is about becoming wise. Right, I'll leave it there and I'll catch you later. Thanks for listening.